Okay, I think we're about to begin. If we could all sit if we wish to be seated. So welcome to the Caribbean Theatre Project. Um, my name is Candace Thompson Zachary and I'm the external artistic advisor on the project. For the last two days, we've been viewing staged readings of plays that have been translated from French into English from French Caribbean playwrights. And tonight we're in for La Jablesse, or The She-Devil, written by Danielle Francisque, who's here from Martinique with us. Uh, yes. Uh, Danielle was born in 1972 in Martinique and grew up in the suburbs of Paris. After studying languages and cultural management, she turned to the arts and trained as an actor, singer, and dancer. Besides her film work, she also appeared on stage in over 40 theater and dance productions in France and in the Caribbean. After returning to Martinique in, two, in 2010, she founded her own theater company, Track, exploring movement on stage. Tonight, um, the stage reading will be directed by Oceana James, who's also here. Um, yes. Oceana is a St. Croix born interdisciplinary theater artist who is based in New York City. Her work has been shown here in the Virgin Islands and in Europe. She has most recently collaborated with Sybil Kempston and Paloma McGregor and is working on a new piece to be shown in Oslo in 2020. And now I bring to you She Devil.
she's our night preacher who appears at high noon, that she shows up alone at festivities, on the side of the road or on the riverbanks. They say her mesmerizing beauty inflames everyone's desire. They say she is a fierce, fearsome seductress who relentlessly enslaves men to her charms without mercy, dragging them in her wake to their ultimate death somewhere at the foot of a cliff. They say that beneath the long dress she wears that outlines her voluptuous curves, she conceals a hoof. Woe betide anyone who discovers it. He shall lose his soul. Red. Alone on a city sidewalk, a man is wearing a costume and a half mask on his face. Ladies and gentlemen, there he was, a poor devil in the midst of a throng of people dancing, a man who cried with no tears, who laughed without joy, who lived without heart. But no one saw it, not even him. And no one gave a damn, neither did he. His two shining eyes had long been sightless, and his living body had long been a walking corpse that never felt the slightest pain. He didn't give a damn, I tell you. That day our man had sung, danced, cussed under a shower of confetti carried by the colorful, masked, costume wave of carnival, which come nightfall had vomited him like a drunk onto the sidewalks of the jubilant city. Say, oh, I am syrup man. To try him is to taste him. To taste him is to savor him. To savor him is to miss him already. You can munch on the earth's crust. You can taste the bark of men, but you won't find a hotter, more beautiful, more coconut, crystal specimen than this here sweet syrup man. Sarah, who wants a man who's sweet as syrup? A sugar man, a honey man, a coconut sugar man. A brown sugar body doesn't contain a single grain of salt. Six feet tall, 100% original. For my father was honey, and my mother was caramel. And I was born under the shade of a caramel sky between the udders of an eternal hour. I am a man who delights in constant tasting, and find no need to enter into negotiation or stroll down the boulevard of passion in order to crash into you, dear. No, just one look for me puts you in evolution and souls confusion in your emotions. Look out, me ladies, damsels, virginal dames. My erogenous zone is a rebel with supernatural powers. Ah. Take heed when you're touching it in order to avoid an explosion or the pleasure of immoderate consumption. Hey. hey, hey. Don't budge, foolish. Cutie, no, 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 no. Where are you going? I don't get mad. Stay, stay there. Stolen goods are mine. And with me, you'll see gluttony is a sin that tastes like candy. And I'm hungry. I'm hungry for a virgin to devour in strips, craving a little candy to cling to my taste buds hankering for the flesh of a hibiscus coat with syrup, hungering for some woman's sugar to devour, digest, <coughs> defecate. Say, oh, sticky sweet man to sip and swirl around in your mouth, to try him is to taste him. To taste him is to savor him. <laughs> to savor him is to miss him already. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of a drunken fool, <laughs> a hungry fool who didn't want to be on his own one evening during carnival. He danced, gesticulated, raised hell in the streets of town. And even though the mass flock had since moved on, loneliness had continued to well up inside of him. My man was out there looking out into the void, striding along the deserted streets, wolf whistling, all the well-rounded silhouettes on his path, on his search for a solitary damsel to take with him. And that's when an apparition in high heels 
A woman is walking dressed in a flaming red. Her face is covered by a mask. There, there she is. I tell you, I see her. Oh, over there, a romantic little wisp of a woman with the skin of a sapodilla tree, a mouth like a mandarin. There, there, nostrils flared. I already inhaled a scent. Fragrance of a girl in solitude, of a girl in need of love, of a girl in need of lust. There, I'm already salivating. I salivate and I erupt. My weapons of easy seduction, I deplore my desire and pounce on the pretty girl. Tactic number one. Neutralize the target. One. Identify the target without frightening the damsel. Take aim with my compulsive testosterone. Notice how she wanders, how she daydreams blissfully, unaware that I'm closing in on her. Two. Arm yourself. Polish one of my pheromone bullets to inflame her passion. That's it. Hang on there, baby. In a moment, your life will be changed forever. Three. Fire. Plant my projectile desire in the retina of the sweet and sour dreams streaming from your pupils. <coughs> I got her. I feel that she's already mine. See how her shell is cracked? How she quivers with desire and her heart is a flutter? Oh, there. The hunter game is excited, clearly at bay. And as, as, as it is in a state of shock, it's time to speed things up. Bing! I blast my fake smile. Boom! I spray her with my synthetic bedroom eyes. Plop! I throw her three or four mystical flashes. And immediately notice that my prey is surprised. And even move, indeed, I see that she's convulsing, that her wild pelt shivers. Boom! Ah, here comes that fatal blow. Advance with a triumphal walk and, and with a royal gesture, seize the dog's breath. It's brittle with moans. Target capture. Ladies and gentlemen, observe how her I become a man who's heaven sent, who has fallen from the sky with my sugar syrup honey. See how, see how my crazy coconut sugar becomes as extensional in this sacrificial ritual? Tactic two. two. Make, Make her drink, drink the, the rainbow. rainbow. Good evening. Good evening. How about a drink? Why not? Zombie syrup cocktail? A radiance to her gaze, a sliver of laughter, a shard of sound, and she says, Yes. Too easy. As a practical <laughs> man, I race to the bar, and with, with my ten agile fingers, I perform a magic trick. Abracadabra, and a tiny drop of venom in a rainbow cocktail, a trap set for the lips of the damsel, with a never-ending smile, and I say to her, hey, and she drinks. Her lips kiss the cold glass as she drinks sexily, abundantly, slowly consuming the ovia spell, which without the slightest Hint of violence in just a moment. Will not go out cold. She drinks while I elegantly distill the divine drip of my syrup words in her eardrum. Your eyes set me on fire, <laughs> baby. Heat up my veins, sweetie. My heart is racing, my doo doo, honey. Like a thoroughbred in my chest. It's no joke, baby. Your fatal beauty kills me. Tonight you'll be the queen of my carnival. <laughs> and I will be your stallion, doo doo, honey. <laughs> so mount my goddess. Come on now, don't be shy tonight. 
She laughs. She warms up, laughs, and sips. Laughs without knowing that little by little, I'm making her fall asleep. She laughs. <laughs> laughs. Laughs. Which makes the stars in her eyes shine even more. But suddenly, her pupils, her precious glittering pupils, twitch within the retina. Suddenly, the flame, the flame in her pupils wavers and gently expires within the almond gaze of her distress. All of a sudden, <sighs> beauty, beauty with a faded pupil stumbles and collapses in the arms of Prince Charming. <sighs> Eyelids closed and body hypnotized. Target hit. Number three, embark on a mission. Sleep, fruit flavored princess. Sleep, sleep with your whole body. I'm hungry for your body, but not your gaze. Sleep like an impulsive octopus. Let me palpate the pulp of your mango. Body, epicurean pulp, pulp of the angel. Two eyes of yours slumber, a hunger for your body, but not your tenderness. Sleep. For there is nothing better than an empty body in which to unload the bitterness of a lost man. Sleep. No need to fall for you, fall in love or shun you. Sleep. No need to open yourself. Or offer yourself like a flower unfurling. Sleep, showing no remorse. It is I who peel away your body's outer layer, and without your permission, pick and devour you, and thus dissipate myself. Sleep, tiny princess, with stars in your eyes. Sleep, let me perform my phenomenal ferocity, solo, secret. Invade your horizontal anatomy. Sleep. Allow me to embark as a missionary to colonize your beautiful jewels. And like an infidel, profane the constellations on your skin. Sleep. Sleep deeply until tomorrow. Until dawn. When just before daybreak, the great king bird sings period. When you part the curtains of your numbed eyelids, ah, your incubus, your night zombie, your doorless, ah, the vagabond will have long since taken leave. I will have left without a gesture, without a caress, evaporating without so much as leaving an address. Having nevertheless discharged in your violated interior, the venomous trace of my poisonous syrup. Poison from a bad seed, poison like gangrene, larval lifeblood, and the nine lunar re revolutions with so misfortune between your bitter sides. Forbidden fruit, face of night, crownless fruit, with no boots or heritage, beautifully grown among your screaming rage. So, oh! I am the Seraphon, soulless sniper, ravisher of women, male papaya, planter of orphan fruit, pounded by pelvic thrusts to stolen wounds. Mine are the lady loves, ready to be sniffed. Mine are the, the heady hibiscuses, ready to make me swoon. Mine are the chicks, ready to plunge you into ecstasy. Mine are the desire. Say, oh, sweet sugar man to deal on the street, sugar man to pimp out, 
Sugar Man to intoxicate. To try him is to. Hey, hey, hey. Hey there, princess. You're not asleep. Surprise attack. The woman seizes him and kisses him hard, leaving the man stunned. Then in a single gesture, she activates the music and starts dancing in a wild and frenzied manner. Ladies and gentlemen, there are words like an emasculated macho, like a like an unpunished junkie, dare I tell you, like a like a plucked rooster, a red tigress who appeared out of nowhere and just kissed me. The unarmed hunter with the red hot pepper mouth. She set my eternal night ablaze. No woman before her, no, not one I tell you, had ever. He approaches the master. Oh, audacious princess. Smoldering princess. Are you provoking me or am I dreaming? Did you just take my lips? Dance like a goddess, you know. I, I, I saw sparks fly from your black hills. Well, what, is, what is the little name that honors you, flamboyant princess? Marianne, Caroline. No, no, no. Tonight, I bet your name is Tululu. Princess Tululu. Or Lady Tululu, if you prefer. Uh, are we playing mystery woman? Is, is it true that the Tululus are as secretive as a hermit crab? But you, my princess, you're not like the rest of them. You deny anything. I see your whole body, everything except your mysterious face. You're a real anatomical bomb, my princess. Has anyone ever I'm told you that? I'm not a princess. Whoa, whoa. The woman turns away. You're a crabby one, stiff as a board. Ordinarily, at this point, the unripe ones soften and the dry ones weaken. But this one, oh, you're leaving me without saying goodbye? You are, you are the queen of the savages. My word, the queen of the fierce pole. You know, we, we could have calmly traded a few words and gulped down a rainbow before saying goodbye or not. You can stay with me if you like. If you like, I, I'm sure the two of us could have gotten along. The explosion of our laughter is scattering around like confetti under the dark petticoat of the tropical night. We certainly could have flashed our bedroom eyes like fireflies in the skies of our desires. Don't you think? You shouldn't play that tight. Do do, honey. It cuts you off from others. When you're as charming as you are, you need to be, you need to know how to be friendly. If only with a smile by answering me when I speak to you, by laughing, reacting, or roaring. She won't answer. But when the door to a woman's lips are closed like that, see, it's not that she doesn't want to answer or that she's not interested. What she really wants is for me to keep sweet talking to her. <laughs> Yeah, you're breaking my back, and you're breaking my heart. You're killing me. I'm at the edge of my grave, you know, like, like, a, like a rotten jackfruit. Unresponsive, the woman continues to walk. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking to you. Couldn't my words at least send a shiver up your spine? My syrup words soften your heart of stone, and my culatura. Loosen the cadence of your steps. Nothing. Can't you even make puppy dog eyes at me? Ah, you're so uptight. As unwavering as, and as unforgiving as a bolt of lightning tearing up the solitary night sky. As unrelenting as the sadness hanging for the tip of the despairing branch tree. Imagine this. You and me, me and you, body to body. Our beads of sweat dripping down the melted wings of time. Our fever burning up the loins of the night. Our lips curled after the storm of our cries. 
Let's leave now, shall we? Let's fly to paradise. Start by removing your mask so I can see your beautiful moon face. Keeping your tongue to yourself, honey. It makes me crave it. Come, my sugar. Come to me so I can make my, my, my tea melt. The party is now a world away. There is no one who will stumble upon us there among the trees. Take off your mask. Together, we'll be fine. Ah, oh, gentlemen. Trying to engage with this woman was as difficult a challenge as climbing the tallest mountain backwards. I walked and walked so much that I ended up walking round in circles over and over again. And during that time, I chewed over my useless words until they fell apart. And at no time did the heartless witch drop me a single Virgo breadcrumb. Hey, tiger! Hey, tiger queen! I've been talking to you for a while. But my words evaporate like smoke <laughs> on the nape of your neck. Am I not good enough for you? There you are, walking by me, rolling your hips. Without a word, not even the tightest word, not even a display of courtesy, not even a, a swear word to the jerk who's trailing you. Oh, it's disdainful, yes, yes, disdainful. You're, you're a damn, a damn little female devil of a woman. Huh. <laughs> what, do you think I'm going to walk around, fall around like this all night? <laughs> Here I am, begging like a dog, like a beggar. I guess I got no pride left. I may be a jerk, but I'm not tomorrow. Wait a second. Don't tell me. You're married. Married! Oh, so that's what it is. But then I'm Madame is married, and now she'll decroak you. Yeah, after dancing depravedly and arousing a stallion man all evening long, Queen Tatulu is now feeling guilty as rushing home to her prison before the stroke of midnight. But it's Carnival, shut up. There's no schedule, and anything goes. Forget about your husband, and at zero o'clock on the dot, you'll be my man, and I'll be your stallion. And tomorrow will be forgotten. Simply, quietly, discreetly, between the two trees on a carpet of leaves. Let's do it. The forest is just a little beyond. Let's go. Ready? So that's it. You don't have the balls. Go hang yourself deep inside the, the asshole of a night. As for me, I'm getting out of here, you rotten bitch of a woman. <sighs> the man leaves. Having lost his sense of direction, he returns and tries to go in a different direction. He comes back. <laughs> whoa, 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 where am I? I, I don't recognize this road. Which, which way should I go? Whoa, whoa, woman, I'm talking to you. What is this strange path you have led me on? white moon punctures the black sky. Surprised, the man is now standing still. They are deep in the forest. Hey, hey, wait. What is going on? What the hell are we doing here? A second ago we were on the road and, and now we're... The farm. Excuse me? You talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking. Get undressed now. What? 
Your costume? Take it off. No. I said, take it off. I'll take off my clothes if I want to. So why do you think I brought you here? You didn't bring me here. I, I, I'm the one who... who You brought me here on purpose? <laughs> I want you. You want me after all this silence? Take everything off. I got it. I get it. I get it. I got it. You tell me all. You escape. I follow you. You flee. I talk to you. You ignore me. All of that to make my temperature rise and hook me to the line of desire. You're on fire. You are. I didn't see that volcano hidden under your chest. Stay away. Oh, you're cool. They can't be boiled over. Not yet. <laughs> oh, naughty little thing. You, oh, you want me to do a little strip tease, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll be watching behind that mask. Take it off. I want to see your face. I want you first. Oh, you're driving me crazy, but, but by blowing so much fire, you may end up blowing it out. Oh, you brought me here for a reason, didn't you? So quit showing off. <laughs> Isn't it my body that you want? So offer yourself for my pleasure entirely. Wait, 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 wait. What about you? Aren't you offering anything? And you know, you're on a weird trip there. I see. You want it all, yet you give nothing. What you want, you'll eventually get. You want any heat? You're the one who's getting what you wanted. Are you provoking me? Look where you are, alone in the woods, with a horny feral dog. Things can go badly, so stop provoking me. Shut up, take off your clothes and lie down there. What kind of woman are you? A chick with balls, is that it? This new breed of a woman, who under the pretext of equality between the sexes believes that she can do whatever she wants and becomes the enemy of men to the point of castrating them in order to transplant their testicles between her legs. Like a war trophy. For what war, huh? For what? What do you want balls between your legs since they're already well attached between ours. If you want me to lie down, start by touching yourself. What do you take me for? A garden that's just here to be planted? I don't need your seeds. A provoker. That's what you are. You're putting a damp on things, and there's nothing left for me to do here. Dreary path have you led me on? I can't find my way back. Show me the way. I said, show me the way. What, have your ears closed up? Path marked. Path cut. All paths are paths. I'm asking for my way. Two paths crisscross, four paths cut. All paths are cut. Has this woman gone? Permanently insane. Covered or uncovered, all paths are a mystery. Oh, oh I, I, I'm getting out of here. He leaves again. The path suddenly disappears. The man falls. <sighs> well, then go away. <laughs> Help me, help me, help me! You're the one who followed me without being forced. 
You're the one who poured your syrup words on my footsteps. Uh, all right, all right. But now I, I want to get out of here. And, and go back to, to there. Get back to off this trail of stray dogs. Not like that. What do you mean, not like that? Start by finding your path. Path? What, what path? The one you need to cross to find your way. Uh, here she goes again. There is only one path that will take you back to the place from which you came. The place I came from, that's exactly where I'm trying to go right now. Let me pass. Not like that. Damn it. Who the hell told me to follow this lunatic? Here she is unspooling her brains and I find myself captive here. Caught under a, a midnight sun, blocked by a vertical wall of trees stretching as far as the dark side of the sky. The woman untied her red dress. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? No, 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 no. What are you doing? Wasn't it you who wanted to explore my landscape? Not anymore. <laughs> That's what I told you a little while ago. I, I don't want it anymore. You can't take back what you've already said. Yes, 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 all right, but, but I, I was caught up in the heat of the moment. You understand? The Bacchanalian booze infused confetti flying festival of female flesh atmosphere. I followed you like a wild dog, but I, I was kidding around. <laughs> this little fever made my tongue loose. You should weigh your words carefully before you speak. If your man's words don't have any value, you're worthless. Hey, there's no reason to disrespect me. Don't get carried away. You're not, you're not any better, you bloody bitch. You're the one who came along shaking your caboose under my nose. You're, you're the one who got me all worked up. And, and you're the one who wants to unceremoniously undress me. And, and you're the one telling me I'm ruthless. Well, all you have to do is lie down there with your mask, and I'll show you if I'm worthless or not. What? Four inches? <laughs> Four inches? <laughs> Do you calculate your value in terms of four inches of ticklish fur? No, eight inches. Your famous supernatural sensual zoo? Lie down over there. I say you won't be laughing in a moment. Aren't you going to ask me to drink something first? <laughs> what? Your rainbow poison? You don't need to. I'll stick your mouth straight to the source. Mm. So you can take advantage of me like all the others. To drown your eyes among the leaves. Pathetic little man. I'll break you and steal your precious pearl. <laughs> and you'll be off the rails by the day. Pitiful syrup. Yes, syrup. I am the syrup man. I have honor, value in all my vigor, and my eight inches will silence you and make you quiver. I'll fold your undisciplined majorette's body. I'll sink my teeth into your red pepper flesh, and I'll tame your Spartacus like waves, so that against your will I can colonize your universe. Yes, syrup, I am the syrup man. I have value, vigor, in all my pride. The acidic poison that sets my lords ablaze inside between your volcanic rocks will lead to bloom. The illegitimate fruit of my bitterness and gloom. <laughs> what is a sugar man worth? What is the value of a masked man, a frustrated man, a victimized man? What is a lying man worth? What is the value of a horror man, a raping man? A bad luck man. What is a ravaged man worth? A man without faith? A man without a shore? A man without an anchor? What is a desert man worth? What is the value of a pipe dream man? A wholehearted man? A castrated man? Oh! Pathetic braggart. You think you are a hunter when in fact real hunters look their prey in the eye and tremble alongside them in a space of a moment. Be quiet. No, you are a thief. 
You break into women's bodies. You take because you have nothing to give. You're empty. Your mouth is full of words, but your eyes are deserts. Just like your existence. Deserts. You don't know why you're alive. You sow seeds of your own oblivion in the bellies of women out of fear that you'll disappear. But you don't exist. You're nothing. You're empty. Be quiet. <laughs> we are not eternal romantic victims. Not your angels, not your saints, not your prostitutes. We are not princesses who need to be rescued. Not your minx, not your monsters or inferior objects. We are not just uterus for giving birth, nor trophy, nor doll, nor private property. And you, who are you? I am everything but your pet. And you, insolent woman, I'm going to smash your face. Target knocked down. <laughs> Am I imagining things? My name. Uh, what? Say my name. Uh, but I don't know you. You know who I am. You know me? I, I, I know you. Are, are you? Are you trying to tell me that we, you, you and I have already? My name. Uh, Tanya, but Laura, but Mariella, Nadia, uh, Erica, Lana. Keep trying. Uh, Virginie, Sylvie. Madeline, Stephanie, my Mary mystery Mary. name. I want my swamp name. Give me my wild woman name. I don't know any wild woman. Mm -hmm. Then you'll stay here. Trapped with me among the four dead and past. How can I possibly know your name? Your face is hidden behind a mask. How much is a masked woman worth? <laughs> Now turn around. Let me see your ugly wild woman face. She turns around and slowly lifts her dress, allowing her hooks to be seen. The man suddenly pants. Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you creeping off to, uh, little man? Uh, I, I, I said back off. Go, back off. Go away. Too go late. Away. I've already kidnapped you. I, I, I said back off. Three sides for conjuration. Three sides of course. Conjuration. Tell me <laughs> who I am. I, Give my name. Say it out loud. I, I, no, no, you, you're the one. The one whose name should never be uttered. Mm. Then you know who I am. Back off. Say my name. Never, say it. never. <laughs> what happened to your syrupy, sweet Superman ball? Oh, please protect me. <laughs> back off, back off. I, I said back Don't off. Don't you know how to face your fear? Back off! Have the balls to say my name, damn it, or may I lightning bolt split you in two! Jobless! Jobless! Your name is. You are the she devil! <laughs> your lips summoned me. And now, you're mine. In a single movement, the she devil turns off the moon, which turns black against the white sky. Jabless. That's what they call me. Jabless, like ogress, like a tigress, like vengefulness. Jabless, that's the name I've been given. Jabless, like Amazon, like demon, like fearmon. Sorceress with eyes like embers. Nocturnal rapture, roaring under the black moon. I dig my shepherd's talons into the wild flesh of your hidden desires. Black Venus with the mysterious lips, cannibal succubus of your sleep with my jagged fangs, I gnaw the secret lifeblood of your unconfessed fantasies. Jabless, that's what they call me. Jabless like adultery, like a powder keg, like millinery, Jabless, that's the name that I've been given. Jabless like Lilith, like 
Carmen Cali, like Erzuli. And if you have the audacity to follow the swing of my hips in search of liberty and promise of tenderness, if you are a man dog obsessed with the obscene desire who seeks to take down my moon, to display it with your trophies on high, if you wish to push me down, discharge yourself before slipping away to make your testicles male pride prevail, know that it is I who tied an invisible leash, I who pull you up to a hallucinatory height like a bois bois puppet you yourself play. Jabless. That's what they call me. Jabless like female, like rebel, like cruel. Jabless, the name that I've been given. Jabless like wild, like implacable, animal woman. Jabless, three times your lips have said my name, so here I am, standing before your eyes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he had nevertheless been forewarned. Stop chasing women as if they were prey. The jobless will end up taking you away. But our man didn't believe those stories passed down from a time when dogs still barked from their tails. He wanted to continue to defy the universal laws of veracity. Then the next thing you know, there he is caught like a game bird, captured at the darkest midnight by a formidable jobless, trapped like a victim among the poor paths of a haunted forest. I beg you, Queen Jabless, let me go. <laughs> you summoned me, and now you run away? I wasn't looking for a woman like you. Like me? A monster who lures men only to devour them. What's better when faced with a monster who devours women? I, 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 no, no, don't play with words, Jabless. You, you really devour them. They say they, they, that they are found dead or dismembered at the bottom of a cliff or mysteriously evaporated. The lucky ones have their brains unraveled. I, I, I've never killed anyone, and as for you, you're a monster, a real monster. Mm. It's been a long time since I appeared among men. They had relegated me to the gutter of their darkest fantasies. I was too desirable, but too indomitable. Thus, too monstrous. But today, I came out of the darkness because you searched for me in the mire of your fear. So what is it that you want? I, I, don't, I don't want anything. I just want to get out of here. <laughs> no one can take their leave without making a sacrifice of some kind. All those who fail to follow this rule have their necks broken. Damn it. Who, who told me to follow this demon? That's all I am. The needle of your compass gets overworked by the swinging of my hips, just by sight. Never have I captured anyone with such ease in the dead of night. You hypnotize me. Yes, you hypnotize me. I, I wasn't myself. Oh, on the contrary, you are exactly yourself. Everyone knows who you are, snake woman. A charmer who enchants and disarms men. You possessed me. You blinded me. And is that why you're trembling? I, no, no, no. I'm trembling because I, I, it's, it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Uh -huh. That's a lie. Fear makes your barrel members tremble. I am not afraid of you. Do you really believe that an old witch like you is going to make me? Don't, don't get so close to me. Why, why, why did you drag your, that damn hoof over, your, over to me? What do you really want? Get off my path, you chimera woman. Go to the mire, go die in the mire of your backward deformity. I said animal, woman, bitch, woman, horse. You have the devil in your body. You are the devil, can only be louse of an unholy woman, like you will dirty, you woman. You nothing but a flesh and bone and hooves, a monster or harlot, you with a stinking pussy, who rides men to better devour them. Between her thighs, you, you deform the world. You damn woman, disfigure men, stop defying me with your look full of flame. Do you, do you want to devour me as well? What are you thinking? You thinking, you thinking that you aren't? Kiss me. You must wake up. 
This is this woman is a nightmare. Kiss me. This guy is a real. You want to leave this place without me tearing out your brains? Yes, I am counting on leaving with my brain intact. <laughs> then you must give me a kiss. You already stole a kiss earlier. That should suffice. Your, your mouth is for fire. Your lips, I, 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 I can still recall. No, no, I don't want to. This time, it's up to you to kiss me. I won't steal it from you. Give it to me. I don't want it. Look at me and give it to me. Stop your eyes or they're devouring you. Come closer. Kiss me. Let my lips kiss no, no. Out your face. No, no, I can't do it. I can't. I can't. Come closer. Let me make you, you cheap puppet of a man, soar. Come, let the tongue of my flames devour your grotesque bacchanalian man's mask. So cold. Come, kiss my burning lips. Remove your plumed costume. Come closer. Allow your distorted man skin to be consumed. Come. Let my fire bite down to the bone, to the shell of your life. Come a little closer. Come here so my lips can set your bits aflame. Oh. Irresistibly, the man kisses the jugglet. Suddenly suffocating, the man struggles with his mask. In a cloud of noise, voices are raised, used, <laughs> and cursed from all directions. <laughs> your papa is a night zombie, a doorless. <laughs> what? How can you allow a woman to give you orders? A man without a face <laughs> takes women oh. while they sleep? Oh. Be a man, damn it! Your father doesn't have a body, a name, a face. <laughs> Quit crying like a young girl! How can that be? Can't you even control her? A hen doesn't sing before a rooster. In zoology, the dominant male is the individual of the group of the animals that the other members follow whom they obey and to whom they submit. Tuck in your nuts, faggot! Uh. <laughs> I don't need a man. You don't need a papa. Don't let this woman castrate you. Vaval, all you got to do is call your papa Vaval, the carnival king. Gotta show which one of you is the stronger sex. The king of the carnival puppets. Uh. Which one of you pisses further? Every year he plants his seeds in a woman and reaps a heap of it. You are a son without a crown or a heritage. You have to know how to satisfy a woman, man. Beware, a woman with a desire is a vampire. <laughs> woman is the door through which the devil enters the world. A woman who seduces is a she-devil. Shame all these sinful women. But woman was created because of man. Circumcise all these shameless women. Men seduce, women reproduce. Stone these disobedient women. Your papa, your mama devour him. After a long struggle, the man manages to tear off his mask. There is a long time. A dark night, in the small hours of his life, a bois bois puppet man slips, falls over, and comes to grief in a puddle of syrup and finds himself standing upside down, covered by a rainbow. And it is with great sadness, filled with joy, that the Vaval man, the carnival king, discovers he is dead. <laughs> dead! He's dead! Object man, man of woman, woman without mother, woman without father, without children, dead. Last man, the blind man without a heart or face, dead. Conquest man, lion, rusa, dog, vermin man, dead. <laughs> he is survived by a dancing procession of tearful dolls with abandoned boobs, a string of children without papas, bastard children born by waving a tragic rod, 
an avalanche of feathers, stray bullets, sweet talking words, and many a destroyed pubis. After his brutal disappearance, an infinite silence roars within him. And for the first time since the flesh of an eternity, he feels the slow hatching of the doom doom in his heart. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, society, congregation, company, at this nostalgic hour when the night coils in the hollow of the early morning, once upon a time, twice, three times, an infinity of times upon a time, a man stood next to his dead body. Jobless lights a big fire. The man throws his mask in it. Night's beauty opened the door of the sky for us. Mother Moon, oh, who makes all the stars sparkle and the sky ablaze? Mother Moon, who illuminates all paths, all paths visited, clears the way for our passage, allow us to cross. Oh, in your direction, I cry, path portal of passages, clear the way of the path, uncross the four paths. May my cry echo on high and on low, in front and behind, here, there, and elsewhere. Yes, may my cry echo, and may what lies below appear and what is above disappear. What is dark lighten, shed light on what lies in the shadows. Oh, may my cry echo. The rain pets at the dirt, the earth reach up toward the sky, all the buried secrets hatch in the light of day. Appearances fool you. Close the portal of your eyes in the darkness of your heart. Hide a light. Learn to find the sun hidden in the night. What you don't see in reality, therein lies. What you believe you see isn't what you should believe. What you hear, you don't know how to comprehend. What you think you possess in truth disposes you. What it is you swallow sets your tongue on fire. Woe, we are entangled, cross and uncross the four, cross and uncross the eight. What is standing up will be upside down. Oh, uncross the steps, fold and unfold, untangle the knots, anchor what afloat. May flower grow in the bosom of the earth. Open, close, open and close. What is closed may open, what has fallen may get up, what is extinguished burns again. Light turn on, illuminate the path. Cover the lost trail, encircle and unloop the four paths. And I said, three, five, seven, beautiful night sun. stars. The man and the woman are wearing white. Jobless. Queen Jobless. And not the witch. The brother, the magician. He 
your lips have made me born again. All this in what foot breaks your courage? The little rooster is dead. And now it is daybreak. And my path has opened up. I, I can retrace the steps and go now and travel beyond the horizon. The man makes his way along a path. Then he retraces his steps. And you? Me? Are you staying here? My kingdom is here. And me? I go back to my concrete shack? You are free. So, this is goodbye? Yes. Unless you're dreaming of another tete-a-tete -tete with La Jardin. Ah. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> the man leaves for a while, returns again. But I'm no longer afraid. I I'm no longer have a reason to flee. That's because you have found the final key for your passage. Tell me why, Queen of Jablet. Why a woman as beautiful as you has to drag along such an ugly leg? It's true that your crook must be ashamed to live next to such a pretty foot, and, and your pretty foot must be so angry to live with such an unsightly hoof. I'm a perfectly imperfect woman. Mm -hmm. I see that. But do you walk like, with an uneven gait like that? Why? Hmm. Before, when the devil was a little boy, before I lived among others, I lived among those men and women who walked upright and follow in the footsteps of those who preceded them along the journey. I walked alongside them for a long time on the well-traveled trails day after day, sun after sun, moon after moon, roaming across the belly of the earth's path, circuits, journeys. I lived among those who anchored their feet in the belly of the earth in order to erect their totems and cathedrals. On one still sleepy morning, when the sun struggled to emerge from the clouds, I distanced myself. I distanced myself from the millinery path, only to land in a wild place. This piece of warm dirt felt like an escape, rather than a conquest, more like an escape to an unknown side of the world. So I began to dance. Dance freely, like drunken butterflies among the wildflowers. I danced for this infinite land. But the others saw me. They cried out my name to warn me of danger. Shouted out against my audacious escape. Ordered me to retrace my steps back to the right path, the one carved out eons ago by those who came before them. But I kept dancing. I was becoming so beautiful, so light, so luminous. They protested against my rebellion and cursed my strange dance in vain. I rode the perfume wave of this wild land to the brilliant blue of the sky. They screamed blasphemies, called me a witch, shaped their bitter insults into a ball and hurled them at me. I was supposed to cease my indecent dance and conform my steps to the appropriate binary rhythm. Then they put a curse on me to hinder the wild steps of my heaviness and to forbid me from walking upright among the others. They sabotaged me. They tried to trip me. But my dance is unstoppable. This hoof is my wild pride. Formidable wildness for people who follow the well-traveled path. My foot and my hoof make me what I am. A woman, wild, a wild woman. Wild woman. I'm not familiar with this, this type of woman. 
I'm the daughter of an eclipse. Two separate worlds coexist within me, night and day, visible and invisible. I live at the edge of the twilight. In order to find me, you must know how to walk the tight rope on the hinge of time. In order to find me, you must know how to walk on the edge of twilight. We had a date under an unreal sky at the crossroads of these terrifying trails. Now you see more clearly. One by one, the stars are fading. It's, it's time to leave, you syrup man. Call me now. Goodbye then, man. Please. Goodbye. And then comes back. But he spared me. He didn't devour me or, or rip out my brain, even though I, I'm a monster with women. You have every reason to seek revenge. I'm not looking for revenge against men. I'm just trying to change their course, force them to abandon their sacred totems, tear away from their narrow exterior, hide out in their undergrowth, to teach them nakedness and silence, so that they may come to desire themselves in the wild, pulsing beneath their skin. Queen Jabless, I want you. <laughs> it's like a sacred fire burning inside me. I have never desired anyone this much. This fire, I have never felt it. My heart has changed. I'm no longer afraid of you. The woman takes his face in her hands and kisses his beard. Then don't call me Jabless anymore. Call me woman. Woman? You are the woman I was looking for. <laughs> You're the one I found. Wild women are more common than you think. But you're not like other women. And you aren't like other men. I, I never knew how to love. Love yourself as you are. Love me as I am. Let's not eclipse each other. Let's explore both our territory without colonizing each other. Let's walk our bodies side by side without stealing each other's essence. Their bodies fuse, and then there's darkness. Mm. Epilogue. The morning after carnival, under the blue eye of the sky, washed up on the sidewalk of the city, a man lies asleep. A car zooms past. The man wakes up with a start, with some difficulty, stands up, looks up and down the deserted street. He seems disoriented. But just before daybreak, the gray kingbird sings peri peri. When you part the curtains of your numbed eyelids, I, your incubus, your night zombie, your doorless, I, the vagabond will have long since taken leave. You will have left without a gesture, without a caress, evaporated without so much as leaving an address, not without having reanimated my once distraught heart, in which now curses my regenerated essence. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Savannah, Kevin, and Ilana for your wonderful performance. Thank you. Yes. We're going to transition really quickly to the panel, and we're going to invite um, Andrew Clark to moderate. But we'll take a second to transition.
thank you, everyone. So we're going to transition to the panel, and Andrew will take us away. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. You all sound hungry. I know you want to go home. <laughs> but if you're hungry, you've got to respond, like, really robust so that we can get out of here. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right, that's better. My name is Andrew Clark. I'm founder and artistic director, uh, founder and executive director of Brata Productions, which is a Caribbean performing arts company. So, so happy to be here. Fantastic work. So, so intriguing. And I'm particularly drawn to this one because a lot of our work, Brata's work, is in the preservation and um, showcasing of folk culture. And so we have a folk festival that we have all these mythical characters and there is Dwayne and Laja Bless, Sukunya, Yama, all of that. Anansi and Rolling Calf, all these mythical Caribbean characters. So it was really interesting to see this take on, um, on La Jabless or La Bless, Jabless as, as she's referred to here. Um, feared, spoken about in the dark, um, referred to as a witch and all these wonderful things. So why bring her to light? Because she was in my, in my mind, in my body, in my fears, in my, in my questions also. Um, in the, she was in the, my grandma's stories. She was in uh, oral tradition around me. And I was wondering, but who, who is he? Who is she? Uh, and um, I was very fascinated by this magical lady, powerful lady, and uh, her relation to men also, because she's strong. She's, she don't, she don't, she, she, she's not afraid of nobody, of no man. And uh, I was very interested in that, and, is, and in her um, sort of magical uh, uh, power she had also. And also because uh, I'm more than 40 years now, and uh, when I, I answer, I, no, I ask <laughs> young generation uh, in Martinique, do you know La Diables? They tell me, no, no they, they don't know who is La Diables. So I had the responsibility through this play to, to um, convey a whole tradition of La Diables to the young people. Fantastic, yeah, that's so true. Our, our, our old time traditions are, are being forgotten, especially by the younger generation with the advent of the internet and cable. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've really lost a sense of self, of their own Caribbean identity. Um, but why, why is this story relevant, aside from the, the cultural lesson, why is it relevant in 2019 for us to hear about this? Larger blessed woman. Because more and more we 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 forget all this, um, the all the story of the night. My my grandma was telling me a lot of story who afraid me a lot. But uh, what took place at night and and we have uh, horses with three three legs. legs, and I was afraid of that. But my imagination was running in my head when I, I was um, listening to that, and all that story are uh, disappearing. And uh, there is a lot of light everywhere in, uh, in Martinique, and really light everywhere, but I think of the power of the darkness. It, but because in, your, in the darkness, you can project your imagination and all that stories, and all that invisible world who is very important also in our culture. Uh, I, I figured out that I learned about light, but when I, in my family, there is a so, uh, also an invisible uh, history. Uh, there are spirits around us. There, is, uh, there are things that uh, influence us, and there is a, a dialogue between the visible world and invisible world, and it was important for me uh, through La Diablesse to, to transfer, to, to convey this, all that invisible world to young generation because 
screens everywhere and light everywhere and, and uh, in a sort of, um, um, comment on dit, uh, Stéphanie, um, rationaliser le monde. <laughs> Rationalize the world. <laughs> oh, yes, but a, 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 a square way, narrow, you know. Yeah, but the world is bigger like that, I think. Bigger than that. Than that. Yeah, you're so right. I, I think of uh, the Caribbean, specifically Jamaica, f you know, 50 years ago when electricity wasn't a common thing, stories were always told, and that's why we heard, that's where we heard about rolling calf and under, you know, like uh, a shed where everybody gathered because there was nothing else to do. There was no light, and this was their, their way of communing. So these telling of stories, that's really faded. And, uh, and, and on the screens, what do we see? What do they uh, show us? Yeah. It's not us. No. There's n n we are not in the stories. We are not on the screens. So the only way for me, it's, it, it's very important for me to, to, to say uh, our young people and our people that we have a specific way to see the world, to live in that world, and this specific way is, is that also. We have, it, it, it is, we are rich of that. It's, a, it's, a, it's important in our imagination and in, in, in our way to be, unique way to be. But on the screens you see French people, but we are not, although we are French, but we are not in their screens. No. So <laughs> theater is the way, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the um, place to be, <laughs> to, is the place to, to tell our, our specific stories. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Oceana, um, in, as, a, as a director in reading, from an audience standpoint, some, some phrases that came to mind as, as I'm watching the, the performance, the hunter becomes the hunted, um, date rape drug? Um, there was a lot of that. So we get so influenced by the cadence of language that we um, don't pay attention to the actual words, but he did attempt to rape her. He drugged her in the, um, under the guise of Obia. Um, and his intent was to rape her. His intent was to impregnate her. Um, but the language was so beautiful and so flowery that we were like, oh, wait, did he just say what I thought he said? Um, so there was that discussion, which happens during carnival time. <laughs> um, it, it does, you know, like in Brooklyn, a sister got murdered because she refused advances of somebody during juvie, right? Um, and so those conversations need to happen, even when we were talking about um, you know, the actor, <laughs> Kevin is a nice guy, and I was like, you have to be sinister, you have to be evil, you have to, like, bring that out, um, because it was, it, it's a thing, and so even in, in that scene, um, I was like, I don't know how to explain this to a man, but it's this look that all women have gotten of being violated just by a look. Mm -hmm. Like, every woman I know can identify with that happening to them. Um, which is very, very unfortunate. It's a heart-wrenching kind of thing that I can say to any woman that I don't know, have you had that look? And I bet my last penny this woman in the back would say yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. And like, <laughs> and it's like to, to have to deal with that. It's, it's a heavy load that you literally cannot walk out your door without having that in the back of your brain. So to bring that to the stage and to still make him um, co co vulnerable, to make him charismatic, to make him likable and still have that element was a difficult part to do in a very quick time without getting into the zoot of, of rehearsals, yeah. Um, and what was what was your process like? Because there there are the words from the playwright mm -hmm. um, and her intentions, and then yeah. there is the layer of the work that the director wants to bring to to the work, like your own stamp. Um, I think for me, and uh, what I did first of all was like um, we just talked, we had conversations. 
um, we spoke about La Jablesse and, the, and how she exists, because she exists in the Virgin Islands as well, a little bit different, but she does. Um, the, the voice mask character um, played by Savannah, we had that conversation about how she, because she's from the Virgin Islands as well, um, about La Jablesse in the Virgin Islands. Um, the woman who played La Jablesse, Illy, is from St. Kitts, but I, she, Illy doesn't believe that she exists in, in, in St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so, so we had conversations, long story short, we had conversations about mythology, about um, La Jablesse, about what was happening, like the political stance of, of, of the author, of the writer, um, what was she saying? And basically, we just jumped in, like you know, like you know, at home they throw you in, the, you go, you go out to sea, and you're learning how to swim, and they just jump you there, and you have to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. Basically, <laughs> this every, you know, like <laughs> you swim or you're dead, right? <laughs> basically, so it's like it was really a quick and dirty um, jumping into the script, but it really was important for me to find that commonality and. Um, build that chemistry because I wanted it to be moving or to, to be dynamic as opposed to sitting. And um, because there were these very intimate, physically intimate moments, you have to get to know each other, just on a basic level. Yeah. Um, and, and in sitting there, uh, I'm thinking sweet man or, and what's? Syrup man. Syrup man. Yeah. The whole time I'm thinking, is this dude Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> because like, yes. Yes, There's yes. so much commonality in the, and the language may be different. It's so poetic, like you said, so beautiful, but he's such a Caribbean man. He really is. <laughs> and it's scary hearing him talk about the day, the, the giving her the drug and impregnating her. And I mean, just so wonderfully said, but just so wrong in watching it. I don't know if anybody else had that experience. No, I, I know I did having reading the play as like he's very Virgin Islander as well. Like, you know, like like it, it, he's very Trini. He's very he's he is the, the <laughs> penultimate Caribbean man. <laughs> huh? The prince of But in fact, uh, wh uh, my fir my first step was to to write about uh, to to write about la diablesse, and then I was wondering, but what men can I put? Uh, uh, her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, yes, I know this ty type of man in Martinique. That is full of that type of man, and I was I I always wonder, but what are the problem of that? What is the problem of that man? who jump on women like that, but in fact, I feel something um, vide, empty. empty. There's yeah. something, mm, and I was, and, and, and uh, I was thinking about history and uh, on plantation where, when men were uh, encouraged to, to to, to make make babies and uh, perhaps I, I was wondering if it's uh, that type of co um, of behavior stays or uh, today or in the in the behave male behaviors I don't know but I, I, um, I think yeah even in um, a discussion and rehearsal process with with Kevin um, we spoke about that one line that he has that he he's this empty man searching. To fill this, so to fill his soul, or to fill a void. I forget the exact line, mm -hmm. but like that being his truth of the whole piece. That that this um, um, sense of domineering and overtaking and overpowering and violating is really to fill this void mm -hmm. that he has, um, and it, it comes out and it comes out in in specific lines. But that one particular line, I remember specifically mm -hmm. as saying, "Okay, here's your truth for mm -hmm. the play." Yes, and I think that uh, that specific man who, who perhaps l uh, lived uh, slavery, I think that they took all of it, uh, all, all his power, 
is the only power they give him is his strength and sexual power. It's the only thing he, he, he's got, he got. So he, st he stays like in that. But in fact, when I was writing in, wh wh I was discovering that the text was talking about colonization also, a sort of auto-colonization oui. and mine. Oui. Yeah? <laughs> but uh, and La Diablesse also when I, I was I, do, I, I was doing research about her I, I saw that it was also um, a Christian colonial uh, uh, um, démarche <laughs> process to to make. Um, uh, to afraid male after uh, after uh, slavery abolition to make them go in the house with the one woman because if you go after a beautiful woman y she will kill you don't don't go after her stay with your unique woman and you're married to her and stay and and it was to to um, to give them uh, other values and Christian values I think. I, I read it. I read about that. I'd like to open the floor. All right. Uh, on that note, I was thinking some of the lines that you made. Um, one of particular reference that she said to him about you need to trace back the path. It it connected with male female birth process and going back the obsession with the vagina of wanting to go back there and searching for something and that disconnection. So somehow that, I never thought about that before, but it connected here. And I must say, the writing was just perfect. Wow, yes. Thank you. So um, just a quick note as we're going to the next speaker, it's interesting that you say that. It reminds me of um, Toni Morrison's Sula and when the mom kills her son because he just wanted to go back into her vagina. He just wanted to go back into her womb. And she was like, I couldn't have him. I needed him to be a man. And so she burns him alive because of that very reason. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that weakness in this, in the other story, she kills him. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is that same very parallel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I must say that uh, the writing is brilliant. And what actually um, surprised me there is that we, as a Caribbean man, as a man from Guadeloupe, I know about La Jablesse, but you turn her into a teacher. Mm. And um, that sugar man, the girl named Sugar, yeah, yeah, yeah. that feels same like... Same Sema. Same Sema. Yeah. That feels like he's powerful, <laughs> um, represents Cari Caribbean men, right? Uh, what is your point? Do you mean that uh, because she's teaching him that kid a lesson because he's, 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 he's been turned into a kid. Mm -hmm. Is your point that ladies, especially in Caribbean societies, don't get the social recognition that they deserve? Mm. Is your point that up to now, because of a thousand of reasons, slavery and blah, 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 men still need to be educated by women? <laughs> in fact, when I when I read about the La Diablesse and and also the world uh, in in France is uh, the f the fe female of uh, the devil, in fact. But in my in my I I thought it was a U European and Occidental vision of that woman, and in my African <laughs> view, I wanted her to be not. Uh, She's cruel, she's beautiful, but she used her beauty to take that man and initiate it. She's not he there to kill him. She's, she's there to, to, give, to, to, to give him a, a sort of rebirth and, and, and let's walk to, together. But don't, don't, don't take me, don't colonize me. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, let's walk together. And uh, it's, it's for harmony to... to, to to, to build uh, a society together. Mm. But we are not 
We don't have to fight. Let's be together and respect. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a uh, question? Man? Uh, I have two questions. The first one is about languages, because that's an English translation, a very good one, uh, by Daniel Carlotti Smith, who cannot be here today, but she did a great, great job. I, I, th I think, well, you were aware of the musicality of the language, and that's a difficult, very difficult play to translate, I must say. <laughs> Uh, a, a big challenge. Um, you are working with two languages in the play, with Creole and French. So the question I have is, um, how does it work? You know this relationship between the between the two languages, because it's not only that th th there is a you know you switch from one language to another, but also you recreate a language. You know the French is Creolized, or so th that the first question I have, and the second one is about the the play was staged in Martinique. So about uh, how did you stage it and also the reception in, uh, in Martinique? Yes, when I, when I wrote that, that play, I was... Uh, in fact, for me, I wrote this play. It's, it's written in French. There are some um, uh, parts in, in Creole, but it's, it's in French. But for me, it's in Creole. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a French who is... Um, um, it's... How that would it, it's uh, <laughs> French Creole? No, it's a ah. Uh? Like I don't know. It's in fact it's it, for me it's in Creole. It's written in French, but it's a, it's a Creole French Creole. In fact, we have a, a special way to 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 take the language, and it was my <laughs> my way to 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 make it mine. This is my French, <laughs> my way to to speak French, and I I was inspired by the um, storytellers. The traditional storytellers, they are, uh, they are a way to speak and to swing the language and um, to um, um, return it, uh, uh, to take possession of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this was, for me, a sort of... Um, uh, in, in prend possession, take possession of this language who is the, 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 the colonial language. And um, the second question is about Martinique. Yes, uh, <laughs> staging in Martinique. Yes, I staged it. I wanted to make a, a, a work with uh, a Caribbean feeling, so I staged a Guadeloupean actor, a Martinican actress. The costume was made, were made by a Trinidadian de costume de designer. And I, I work with the um, Guadeloupean choreographer. I want it to be Caribbean. So it's beautiful for me to be here <laughs> because it was, uh, it, it's like a dream. And, um, and um, 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 pff, tellement de choses à dire. I, was, I have so, so much thing to do, to say that, uh, in fact, how it was received by, by the public we don't, ha by the audience, we don't really have on stage stories about our own um, traditional figures like that. And people came and came and came. It, it was full. And people, there are a lot of people who didn't see the, 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 the play because it was full, in fact. And uh, we played it in Guadeloupe also last year, full. And a lot of young people also. And they are, I, I was very happy because uh, they, they are the audience I was uh, targeting. And uh, they very received it uh, like, a, like a sort of, of pride because they see things that they know. They see p uh, characters that they are, they, they recognize. And it's rare because uh, it's rare. Yes, because uh, so we have, uh, it's, it's, it's a aesthetics. Uh, specific aesthetics also it's okay because I see the bodies uh, it was like that because the bodies are, v are very important it was in a carnival um, uh, stage so yeah because you know the three colors red black and white are three colors we use in Martinique and Carnival who uh, who uh, you have the Mardi Gras who is the hot day where there is very, very seducing, it's hot, hot carnival. 
And then you have the day where Vaval, who is the, the big uh, puppet of the carnival, is, is burned the last day. And that, uh, th on that day, people are, are we wearing black and white. And is the, the, the moment he's, he's, he's dead. And I was making it match with the moment uh, when the man dead and we birth, in fact. Yeah. And the red moment is the moment when she was uh, her seducing him. Yeah. But the black moment for me is when she, the world, uh, you, you, you see that the world uh, switch. switch. When you, you, you see that uh, she's not a prey, yeah. but she is the one who predator, the predator. And he's the prey. So and quickly, too, that translated very well because I d totally got that. Um, but also, like, it, it, and that's, I found the voice mask character serving as this kind of masquerading, um, like, by character. And he, like, but wears red, black, and white also. And also is the one that can, that traverses the world of her and the world of him. Mm -hmm. So there's a character and the colors and um, all of those things tie in. So that, that was perfectly perfectly clear in the mm -hmm. translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks, unfortunately, I'm being given the timeout signal. Oh. We're at the end of, uh, so, yes. We're going to switch over, just so that we have enough time to do a little reception here. So we obviously, we can keep talking, but informally, if that's okay. Is there any a last word that we need to say out loud? Anyone? Oh, it's like a dream, oh. and okay. I'm happy because good, good, no, good. because uh, it's I feel it's uh, it's uh, it, ma, ma, the imagination um, travels, yeah. and it, and it's uh, vib vibre, yes. Vi the vibration, common vibration, and different vibration. It, it's very really rich for me. It's very thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you to Andrew for moderating the discussion. Thank you so much, Danielle, for sharing your work with us. Um, and thank you to everyone for attending the Caribbean Theatre Project. This has been a wonderful two days. Um, and I'm thinking about Brent Hayes Edwards, and he talks about articulating the diaspora, and that's about announcing who we are, uttering, articulating, but also about this idea of like joining, like coming together as a joint and talking about what's different about us and what's common. So I, you know, I just want us to take that maybe forward into whatever we do next, wherever we go, wherever we land up. Um, and I don't know if Stephanie, you want to say anything yeah. briefly? Yeah, yeah, briefly. Okay. So this, these were two uh, very intensive days, you know, uh, from two in the afternoon until 10, so eight hours each day. Um, we, we, we had the, uh, you know, the pleasure to, um, to make a dream come true, as you said, that was like a dream, but uh, a, dream, a dream which came true, and, and uh, it was for me, um, uh, you know, surprising, uh, rewarding, um, from, um, from an artistic perspective, because uh, all the people who collaborated from, you know, the beginning, uh, the advisory board who selected the plays, until now to see the actors, you know, giving flesh and blood uh, to the text. And we had the translators, we had the directors, so there are so many people involved. And, and to see the result, it's very inspiring, very touching. I, I, I knew all of the plays, but to hear them in another language, uh, with other bodies, and uh, it's just like a new place uh, and different perspective, different um, interpretation, and, and that was, you know, very inspiring for me. Uh, I really want to thank, you know, I cannot thank everybody, but uh, Nicole, I want to thank you because <laughs> you were really, really, uh, you know, without you, uh, without you, the project wouldn't have been possible, so I, I, th I want to thank you deeply. Uh, Frank, also for welcoming us um, in the Martin Siegel Theater. All the translators were not here, all the directors, you know, some of them are here, some have already left. All the, all the actors also, thank you very much. And um, all the invisible, all the, all the invisible spirits <laughs> who were with us. Uh, Mike, I want to thank you, thank you very much.
because you, you did a great job. I mean, you were here all the time. We didn't see you, but here you are. Uh, thank you very much, and, uh, and May also, thank you for helping. So, a lot, a lot of invis and Candice, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Candice, you were absolutely, absolutely great. Um, so, thanks to everyone, and I really, I really hope, you know, this is the first step, uh, and that this project act will give birth to a uh, production, productions of the play, that the play can continue to live and you know, on the American stage and, and abroad. So I, um, I, really, I really hope that uh, in the future we'll, we'll see the production of the, of the plays. That, that's the goal of this, uh, of this project. Frank, do you want to add something? I would just thank you for everybody. Uh, because it's so, it's such a hard thing when 